Hey guys, you're right on time with Sama Time. Today we're going to be talking about Bitcoin with Elizabeth Stark. So I wanted to know, how did you become so interested in Bitcoin? Well, I'd always been fascinated by the internet and new technology. Um, you know, I heard you say just now about transitioning into a new world. And for me, the internet and Bitcoin, especially as I got interested in it, is a new kind of frontier for technology, for the world, for the ability for people to transact globally. And Bitcoin is one of those things where like, once you start learning a little bit, you can't, I mean, I think you know this, you just can't stop, yeah. right? It's, once you go down the rabbit hole, you're like, wait, I wanna learn more and more and more. And it's one of those things that's actually a positive development where you just can't stop, right? Yeah. Um, so for me, Bitcoin is at the intersection of so many different areas, everything from technology, computer science, law, um, you look at kind of the political angle, you look at the community angle, um, sociology, cultural angles, global angles, macro, finance, it's just at the center of so many of the areas of our world today. So, you know, I work in Bitcoin full time, I've been doing this for quite a while now, and every day there's still so much more to learn, um, and that's part of what I love about it. Yeah, there is still so much much to learn, and I've just loved my time being here, learning about Bitcoin, experiencing the Bitcoin feel, and just me, 10 years old, experiencing this. I'm like, wow, this is big. Oh, by the way, Samara, you, you are the future, quite literally, and the goal is for your generation, you don't need to know about the old financial system because Bitcoin is the future, and you can just start off with Bitcoin. Um, so I'm really happy you're learning about this. By the way, can I ask you a question? Yeah. So what is the most surprising thing, I'm curious, or that you've learned here at the Africa Bitcoin Conference? Or what's something that you didn't expect that was unexpected? Well, maybe one of the things is that you can mine Bitcoin, but it takes a lot of energy and there's different types of it, like web mining, then you can have someone mine for you, then you can do mobile mining, or pool mining so I'm like wow all of these terms and that the fact that you can keep it it's permissionless and that people can't just be like oh I'm canceling your bank account ah, yeah that's one of the key parts of Bitcoin there's actually a company here based out of Kenya called Gridless that enables mining across Africa um, and they're doing really great work they just had a big announcement yesterday as well yeah I saw it was crazy good I'm like wow and I'm just learning all these things about Bitcoin but in your opinion, would you rather mine Bitcoin or buy it? I'm going to actually say something different, which so I'm founder and CEO of a company called Lightning Labs and I'm part of the broader Bitcoin Lightning community. And I know you've learned a little bit about it, but I actually would rather be building on Bitcoin. I actually am building on Bitcoin um, because people think of Bitcoin as, you know, something you can buy, which you can, uh, you know, you can mine, people participate in that. Um, but building on it is really how we get to this future state um, and really being here, meeting the community of developers, builders that are building the applications on Lightning, on you know, this layer two technology that makes it easy to send and receive Bitcoin globally is really what's taking it to the next level. And being here in this community, meeting all the African builders, the developers, they're the key to the future. And by the way, you're one of those people. <laughs> so I'm excited to see what you build. Yeah, I am too. So, if you had to tell a child about Bitcoin and how they can get into it, how would you play it? Well, the great thing about Bitcoin is Bitcoin doesn't care. It doesn't care if you're young or old. It doesn't care if you're, you know, in one country or another country. It doesn't care if you're man or woman. It doesn't care about any of this, right? And that's what makes it so powerful. Um, and it's open to all and it's open access. So, for example, there are a number of Bitcoin applications that have been built by, you know, teenagers or even coders that are younger, um, which has been really interesting. Bitcoin, so for example, if you need a bank account, there's usually a minimum age of a bank account. There's no minimum age to use Bitcoin. So one way to get started is just, you could earn Bitcoin. So there are a number of applications out there that actually will let you just earn Bitcoin. People think, oh, I can use Lightning to spend, but actually you can use Lightning to earn. So one of those is called stack work, um, where you can perform small tasks and actually earn more Bitcoin. So what I would say to you know, the younger community out there is um, get, get some Bitcoin, you know, use one of these sites to earn it. Um, check out, there are so many interesting videos out there to explain it. 
educate yourselves. You can talk to your friends about it. Um, it's a really welcoming, open community, as you know, you've seen here the, over the last couple of days. And you know, there are going to be so many opportunities. There are already many opportunities in Bitcoin. They're only going to increase in the future. So this is a great way to get started if you want jobs, internships, you know, getting involved in this broader community. It's really going. It's already the future, but it's going to be even more where the world is headed. So you guys can actually have a head start. You know, you can learn this natively at the very beginning, and then you're building the future that we're all a part of. So I've been hearing about, oh, you can use Bitcoin for investing, investing, investing. Do you agree with just that, or is there more? So the goal that we're building with Lightning is not just to make Bitcoin an asset for investing, which it can be, but to make Bitcoin an asset and a technology for transacting, for sending payments, for earning money globally, and making it much more of what we call a monetary network, a way to send and receive money globally. Um, so we have an incredible community of startups, developers, enthusiasts, people running nodes and all of that. So it's not just about investing, it's about making Bitcoin useful for the world and building new use cases um, globally. And there are many cool companies here in Africa that are building on Lightning. Um, so for example, we have Bitnob, Machankura, um, Fetty's doing a lot of work here. They're doing work related to Lightning. Um, Gridless, I know in the future, is really interested in combining mining and lightning. Uh, Strike just announced a cool partnership with Bitnob. So all of these are bringing uh, payments utility. Paxful, um, they're doing great work here. And they all use lightning. So it's not merely just like, oh, I want to invest in this thing. It's how can we bring Bitcoin to the world in a way that makes it useful? And one of the areas that I think is really cool is the creator economy. So let's say I'm a musician, an artist. We also have big gaming communities, video gamers. Like you can actually make a living now being a video gamer and you can earn money with lightning. Who knew that this could actually be your career, right? Don't tell your friends that. <laughs> um, and these are new ways to earn money and make a living. So Bitcoin and lightning open up opportunities for people that would not have had it otherwise. So it's not merely about investing, it's actually about transacting, earning, accumulating value and accumulating wealth. So with the way that Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is on the scene, do you think fiat currency will exist in 15 years? Oh, wait, one five years or five zero? 15. Okay. Because <laughs> there's a big difference between one, the one and the other. You know, it's always hard to predict exact timing of these things. Um, for 15 years, I would say yes. For 50 years, I would say let's see. A lot of these kind of monetary regimes only last for a certain amount of time. Like, you know, in the U.S., we've really only been under the current standard for about, um, it was since the 70s. So it's really not a very long period of time. And we see that these only sometimes last less than 100 years, 70 years. Lynn Alden, a good friend of mine, has written a great article called What is Money? And she talks about the evolution of different monetary systems. For example, you had gold-backed money. You had... Um, a variety of previous currencies, like people actually use beads and shells and things like that back in the day. So our current fiat monetary system um, certainly has cracks in it that Bitcoin helps to expose. 15 years, I say yes. 50 years, I say anything is possible. And I am confident that Bitcoin is going to be around and play a big role within that 50 year time frame. But it's just so cool because we've been learning about money and social studies, but we never mentioned about Bitcoin. I'm like, hmm, any types of other money. Class? Can you start a class in your school where you, or like a kind of program where you educate your peers about Bitcoin? I think I can. <laughs> I'm I already going to work on it. So I'm like, you know what, let me just search out the people that seem very interested in social studies. I know they're very interested in social studies. They'll be super interested in Bitcoin. Well, not only that, but the cool thing about Bitcoin is like, you know more about Bitcoin than your teachers. I mean, I don't know your teachers, but I'm, I'm going to, you know, make that assumption. That's what's so powerful about it. You have the power to educate, you know, your peers, your fellow students. And Bitcoin really is open to anyone and can level that playing field. So I think you should, you know, I'm proposing you can figure out a way in your school to have either a club or a workshop or to get people excited about and involved. And we were chatting yesterday about Generation Bitcoin, a group that was started by um, two students in out of New York, two women, who are in high school, and they are educating high schoolers and young people and 
I said you should contact them, get in touch. Around Bitcoin, it's a global group called Generation Bitcoin. So we see some really cool efforts from people that are the future of Bitcoin that are going to be educating people globally. And, you know, people may not know about it now, but given the trajectory and where things are headed, um, they're going to know about it in the future. Wow, this is just all so beautiful and everything just watching Bitcoin bloom. And I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to let me interview you and everything. It was so fun. I got to learn new things and from different people's perspectives. It's very nice. And really excited to be sitting here with the future of Bitcoin. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs>